All right, today's video is going to be real short. We're just going to fix some issues um, that were in our code previously. Um, one of which is that um, we wrote all this code to download data, and then we had code that actually downloads it right here. And if you remember, we had this thing called file names, and we had this other thing uh, that was the URLs, which was called links. And we used that to download the data in a map function. And so if we rerun this code right here, this map to code, what that's going to do is re-download all the data. And the problem with that is we're hitting this server. It's going to take time. This doesn't really matter for only the four files we have. But if you had you know, hundreds of files, you wouldn't want to spend all this time re-downloading the data. So um, what we'll do is add a little bit of code to, to dynamically evaluate, are all the files downloaded? And if they aren't, then we, sh then we should download them. So first, we're going to make a new object called downloaded. And that's going to be, we're going to use this function called file exists. And so what we want to know is do these file names, which we got from the URLs, do they already exist locally inside the data folder down here? And so we'll just say file exists file names. And then we'll get this vector back that contains just a true false. So basically, since those all were already downloaded, they're all trues. Well, that's great. So now we want to make a new object called maybe evaluate. And what we want to do with this evaluate object is decide, basically set a rule that says, if all of these are true, then I want the evaluate to be true. And so what evaluate will do is it'll say down here, we'll set it to um, run this code or not based on what's in here. And so to get just one, we don't want four trues. We just want one true. And we only want that one true if and only if all of the ones that come down and downloaded say true. So this function called all just evaluates a vector of true falses, and it tells you if, if they are all true, then it gives you a true. And if a single one is false, it gives you a false. So what we can test that here. We'll add a false to the downloaded um, vector. Then we'll evaluate it again with the all, and then we'll see if evaluate is false now. And it is, because there's just one false. So just to show you how that works. And now we have evaluate, and now it says true. And then here, we're just going to use a simple if statement. We're going to say if evaluate is equal to true, then download this. And uh, you'll notice I actually sort of, there's an, an issue in here. So right now, this says evaluate. We want this to be a true false. We want it to tell the computer to download the data or not. Um, right now, it's saying true. So it's saying evaluate it. But that is because all the files are already downloaded. So that's the opposite of what we want. We want to say, if any file is not download, downloaded, re-download them all. And so just to inverse the evaluate function, we're just going to put that uh, exclamation point. And now evaluate will turn into a false. And so now when we say is evaluate equal true, if we just run this little section of code, it's going to say it's false. So if it's true here, we want this to run. And since that's false, since this evaluates to false, it's not going to run that. And so else, and then we can just print and say data already downloaded. So now if we run this command, it's going to say data already downloaded. And of course, if we change the value of evaluate um, to false, then it would actually download the data. So this is just a nice fix so that um, you don't have to rerun large chunks of code. And you can do this in a bunch of different ways. This is just one way. Obviously, another way you could do it is rewrite your function and have the function check every individual file and if that file is there or not. Um, but here I just chose sort of the easiest one. The next issue that I wanted to highlight is uh, for the in-class work, you had to extract some meteorological data URLs. You had to download some meteorological data. And then I wanted you to read in the data. And this is where we got to a problem. The data set, the meteorological data, does not have headers. And, uh, and um, what I was trying to have you to download is this stuff. And then you needed to look at this forcing data readme file. And that the reason you need to look at that is it comes with these column names. And so somehow you needed to get from this PDF the column names. Um, and so luckily, in class, we figured out how to do that. Um, and by we, I mostly mean John. And 
Julie and what they did is they used this other package called PDF tools. And so um, I'm just going to sort of rewrite their code. So I'll put it in here and I'll put in, we'll eventually get headers out of this. Um, so we're going to sort of get the, the web page, which is part of your homework. So I'm just going to um, write, I'm going to, you need to do this programmatically, but I'll just do it here. We're going to do read HTML. Actually, we're just going to go ahead and do PDF text. And this is where the metadata lives. Um, and so this is just going to directly re read the PDF from the, the website. Um, but for PDF text to work, you need to have the package library or PDF tools installed. I don't even think I have it installed in my computer. So I will quickly install that. And what PDF tools is just like RVest is a way to sort of scrape through HTML files. PDF tools is a way to scrape through PDF files. So if you have tables and PDFs, this is a great package to sort of try to extract that data programmatically. So I'm just going to load it in here. And then now this PDF text will actually be read. And then what, if we read PDF text, we get this big file called headers. And it just has a bunch of information here. So we don't really want that. Um, what we want to do is read this line by line. And what these backslash ends are is basically uh, that's saying a new line. And so the PDF reader knows that. And so it's going to read lines on this object. Or excuse me, we're going to use the reader package to read the lines in the object. And that's just going to look for all these ends. And it's going to break it up into individual parts. And so if we do that now, now headers is just individual parts. And so we have a bunch of those. Um, and then what you can see is we have a bunch of white space here. So we can use this command called trim white space. So now if we do that, we lose all that white space when we go to the top. So now we just have ones and dots. And then we can um, go ahead and string split this again. So we're going to string split this vector. And we're going to string split it based on these dots. So you see one dot year. And so we'll put uh, two backslashes in there and then dot. And th the reason we have to put those backslashes is dot is a special character. And the double uh, backslash escapes. And it lets it just evaluate it as a dot. This is sort of like deep computer stuff. Um, and then what you can do is just say that we want to split it into two. And then we want to just extract the second column. And then we just want 1 through 26. So then we just want 26, the, the first 26 results of this vector. So we'll just get 1 through 26. Uh, I'm going to break some of these pipes so you can see what this looks like. So headers now is going to be string split on the dots. And all the way up at the top, we're getting the ones taken out. Um, and then all the way at the bottom, we're getting these the the sort of second column, which is this is the names of the columns that we want. So when I put this pipe back and I break this one, what headers does now is it just gives us just that second column. So now we have year, month, day. Great. That's what we want. And then we just need the first 26. And there we are. So this is just sort of a quick fix um, and a, a way to introduce sort of PDF reading in R. See you tomorrow.